What's up? What's up? What's up? Good to see everybody. Thank you for joining me tonight on the O'Halloran. We have it on Facebook. We have it on YouTube. We have it on Twitch. This is the second show on Twitch. Hey, Twitch fans, thank you for joining me. This is awesome. We got a fantastic show tonight. My God, we're going back. What's up, Trey Mock? What's up, Uriel? What's up, everybody? Good to see you, Superbones. Danger Girl AC found to be missing CY. Thank you for the raid, Jay. Awesome. Jay Muse, folks, raiding me from Twitch. Huge shout out to those guys. Thank you, Jay, man. Enjoy your dinner. Oh, man, I got a huge show tonight. Um, bringing back childhood memories. If you didn't grow up with Sesame Street, The Muppet Show, Fraggle Rock, Dark Crystal, the list goes on and on. This man coming up was involved in it. It has been fantastic getting to know our guest this evening, Mr. Steve Whitmere, who's done. Uh, not only these characters you see on this screen here now, but tons of other. He's been the voice of Kermit the Frog for over 27 years. He was Ernie of Sesame Street, of Bert and Ernie fame. I mean, when I was a kid living in the Bronx in New York City, huge fan of Sesame Street, I remember um, my mother buying me one of these it was an Ernie puppet. Um, it was like hard plastic, hard plastic hands, and then like a foam and, you know, fabric body. And I used to, I used to, where I lived in my building in the Bronx, our bedroom window overlooked dead center right above the main entrance of the building. So literally I would put on like an Ernie puppet show out that window when I would see neighbors coming in, I'd be like, hey, hello, what's going on? We, what kind of groceries do you have, Mrs. Smith? You know, obviously that's not Ernie's voice, but you get what I mean. Um, I also did some DJing out that window too. Uh, not not hip hop. I mean, even though this was the time of hip hop's birth, so to speak. Um, but one of my favorite toys uh, was that Ernie puppet. And who knew that 40 some odd years, 30 some odd years later, I'd be talking to one of the artists, if not the artists who, who worked with, as Ernie, who really grew the whole thing. It's been absolutely crazy. Good to see you, Lord Shadow, Bonista, uh, Bonanista. Good to see you. Uh, thank you guys once again for joining. Um, I got to tell you, this is going to be so much fun tonight talking uh, to uh, Steve. Uh, I've caught him a few times now. We've been at the same Comic Cons from time to time. And uh, it's been really great. He has a new project out now called Cave In with Weldon, the IT guy. 
IT standing for Internet Troll. So hopefully we'll uh, we'll get to talk to him in a little bit as well. Um, and we have some fun fun surprises for those who are joining us tonight. You're going to see some some fun um, mashup, shall we say, of uh, my world and his world. It'll be a lot of fun. You're going to enjoy that. Um, I'm glad that people are watching us from uh, from all over the world. Some people are watching us on their phone. Some uh, some people are watching us on their tablet. Um, I think uh, it, we're even getting into some senior citizen facilities as well. Uh, some countries are even making this some headline news information. So just uh, want to thank everybody there for, uh, for joining us there. Um, but I got to say, this is going to be too much fun. I mean, the the amount of history that this guy has been involved with surpasses so many things. It's just crazy. So you know what? You've heard me talking. Let's bring him on because he's really the guest we want to talk to. So please, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch fans, give a huge, huge, epic Sesame Street World of Muppet welcome to Mr. Steve Ah. Whitmore. Hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. I caught you. I uh, see what you're doing here, Brian O'Halloran. Hmm. Well, Weldon, what are you doing here, man? You, yeah, we're not, am we're I not doing here? Talk. Yeah, I'm watching you, buddy. I'm watching you because you know that ever since I inducted you into the troll mob, you are not supposed to talk to Steve Whitmire. Um, I, I, I. I I did not know that. I didn't read that. That was in the, sure. that must have been the fine print. Yeah, well, it is. At the very bottom of the page, it's written backwards, so he can't read it. Listen, buddy, I see what you're doing here. He is my nemesis. I hack him. He is one of the people I hack. What do you think you do? You thought you were going to get away with this? No, 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 not at all, Weldon. Uh, trust me, I, I'm hmm. a proud member of your union. I know that. Yeah, I would yeah. never cross any union rules. I mean, yeah. a lot of the folks out there don't know that I'm part of the union. You know okay, what? Okay, so you well, are. You are. Let me show them that we are part of the union. Shall I do that? Well, you hang on a minute, buddy. Are you still going to talk to this guy? Um, I uh, kind of promised him I'd Venmo uh. him dinner money. Oh, all right. Let me let me just let me just tell you this, Brian O'Halloran. Puppeteers, they're beneath me. So I'm gonna leave. And if he shows up, good for you. If he don't, it's your problem, pal. It's your show. Hm. Well, I'm gonna show the viewers out there how well you are with your amazing union. Shall well, we? Guess what? I you go right ahead. I am not gonna be in the same room with that guy, okay? Hmm. All right. I'm walking if out you're... of this interview. I'm done. I'm done. Uh, no, no, don't. Uh, oh, I'm kidding. Folks. I'll call you tomorrow. Okay, I'll talk to you then. Bye. All right. Well, folks, just so that we don't really piss Weldon off too much, let me just show you how we, um, shall we say, got together. All right, sound. We have a bit of a technical difficulty. I guess the troll cave is not quite up to snuff at the moment. They're getting their bandwidth a little weirded out. Let me see if I can bring this back to see if I can get Weld in here and get back to where we were at. Hang on. There we go. That's the thing with cave trolls. They don't have great internet. Here we go.
Am I hearing that there's no sound? I, I'm not hearing it here. I don't know whether I should. Okay, hang on. My apologies once again. What about now? I'm still not hearing it on my end. Still not hearing it. Okay. But I, mean, I don't know whether it would be affected in the green room. Let me see if I can. No, no, it. you're uh, you're in the stream, so everybody can hear you. So hang on. Oh hi. <laughs> <laughs> I could try looping it as we go. Were you able to hear that? No, uh, I can hear it playing in on your out of your headphones, but that's about it. <laughs> you can you hear it? No. No. Hang on. <laughs> this is like mm. when my grandfather used to show home movies. Uh, on this TV. is so weird. <laughs> uh, my apologies to Weldon. Well, he's gone, so it's okay. <laughs> Not to worry. got to be Weldon's fault, right? Sorry? It's got to be Weldon's fault, right? I mean, of he's, course. he's trolling your show now. He's he's totally hacked it. He's totally hacked my show, and that's the problem. Yeah, he, he knew you could show the video, but he's preventing you from hearing what he said. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to – I'm going to come back to that. Yeah, we'll come back to this. So, ladies and gentlemen, my apologies, but the one and only Steve Whitmire, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I, you know, I think going forward, I should probably add sound to all the videos that I send you. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. <laughs> but first of all, thank you, Steve, so much for wanting to be a part of the show. Um, sure. We got to hang out, like I said earlier, a few times now um, on the road on, on different comic cons and yeah. different shows and uh, with you and Carol and a whole bunch of people yeah. uh, from the Sesame Street uh, Muppet world. And I just, um, I had shown earlier, you know, one of these toys that I had as a kid was I had, this I had the same toy. I had that same toy. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, it was, it entertained me for hours and hours and hours on end. Um, and this, this is a, a print I picked up at one of the comic cons many, many years ago. It's a dinner scene. Um, very similar to another famous dinner scene. Oh, look at that. And wow. uh, <laughs> it's one of the one of the items I really, really, really like. Oh, that's nice. Um, wow. I don't have really any kind of religious iconic iconotry uh, or paintings in my house. But when I saw this, I was like, ooh, yeah, now this is a dinner party I could get behind. <laughs> You know, it's funny because what whoever the artist is who did that is uh, approached the Muppets the same way that we did like Treasure Island and Christmas Carol by you take the Muppets and you figure out what role would be right for what character. I'm not saying it looks like the name is like a Jesse Rod Rogerson or maybe Rodriguez. Yeah. I can't quite the way he wrote it. It's nice. though. But uh, yeah. thank yeah. you. know, I saw it at one of the again, one of the Comic Cons and I yeah. thought it was. Perfect. <laughs> so how are you? Well, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I, I'm doing very well. I've been um, busy uh, spending way too much time working on this cave-in thing. But, you know, when you get into doing something creative like that, it, 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 for me anyway, it, it just becomes uh, – I get a little bit obsessed about it. And I was that okay. way about the Muppets too for, for a long, long time, you know. And 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 I've you know I've said this before, but I think creative people do what they do because they have to. Yeah. You know, you, you have to do this. Uh, otherwise, you'd you'd spend a lot of money in therapy or something. So when did you when did you 
pick up the art form of puppetry? Well, it actually was, I, I guess my real obsession with, with puppets, it, actually it was all about the Muppets too. I was never interested in any other style of puppets. You know, they're marionettes with strings. and I, Which I was going to bring up, yeah. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't do that. You know, I was, I was never able to, and I had marionettes as a kid and I spent all my time asking my mom to untangle them, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and, and everybody <laughs> did that. They oh, all God. always got tangled up and then mess. God forbid you spent the money on the two handed <laughs> operation. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. I was no good at that. Uh, you know, and, and I had some of the little ones that they're this, like I call them punch style puppets, but it's right. the head here and the two arms here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was kind of fun, but, but they, but they weren't alive enough. And so when Jim's. It's one know, I picked up at a puppet, at a puppet theater, I was doing a, an independent yeah. film and one of the scenes, one of the <laughs> scenes took place at a puppet theater. And so uh, the guy had a store in his lobby and stuff. And just to support the art form, sure, um, sure. I went, I said, Oh, this is like a, Batman, Captain American crossover kind of puppet. So I <laughs> yeah, yeah. bought it to, to you have support. A work, you have a working mouth? Uh, can you can you get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. 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 I'm just picking. I still, I, I don't know how to. Uh, you know. Well, you can give me. It. You can give me acting lessons. I'll give, I'll give you puppet right. lessons sometime. <laughs> but my but really it was the Muppets that that drew me in and Jim Henson's work specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was about 10 years old when I really became aware of all that. Uh, I mean, I'd known about the Muppets for years before that, but I, Sesame Street came on the air the year I was 10 years old in 1968, 69. And uh, I, was just, I was just taken by it. I couldn't stop watching it, you know. Um, and I wanted to know how to build. I, wanted, I, I could just tell that those people behind those characters were having a really good time. And uh, that drew me more than anything was the depth. You know, I didn't know this when I was 10. There's a lot of depth to those characters on Sesame Street. You know, Ernie and Bert are a great comedy duo. You know? Yeah. Um, so, so there's, you know, a lot of people think, well, it's puppets. They're just these little little things that jump around on the screen. But with the Muppets, we always had backstories with the characters and really worked on who they were. So I see, uh, I found this really <laughs> early shot of Kermit. Yeah. Well, that, so uh, I, what's I going on here? That, I can explain that picture. Uh, I'm surprised I didn't have, well, I always had like hair here. And for some reason there, I'd shaved it off. Uh, boy, is that actually me? So Jim, during the Muppet Show days, uh, he won a lot of awards for that show. And one of them was in Germany, this thing called the Golden Camera Award, which is their equivalent of an Emmy or an Oscar, basically, in, in Germany. And uh, he won the award and he, he was not able to go and accept the award. So I don't know why. I mean, I'd only been with the company for a very short time. He let, he sent me to, uh, I mean, I wasn't on TV with this, but I went to this thing and accepted the award. Um, I, I have no idea why I had no business doing this. I was maybe 20 years old there, you know? Um, but part of the deal was that I was, you remember, you remember a character called Sweetums? It was this big monster character with the teeth. He actually yep. looked like Weldon, now that I think about it. Sweetums is big costume. And they wanted Sweetums to be a part of the show. So I was going to be inside of it. Even though I didn't do that character, all he did was just run down the aisle. Right. Um, so I did that. So as a result of that, I was the Muppet guy who came to Germany. It was really nice, you know, to be that young and treated so well. Oh, uh, in Germany, I assume Berlin? Yeah, and, and, and a very interesting story about that. My wife and I talk about this all the time. That was before the wall came down mm -hmm. in 1978, 79. And we went to a magazine, a magazine company whose building was built on the, on the wall, basically. And so from their windows, you could look out into this, you know, no man's zone over to the other side, over to East Berlin. And uh, down here was this big football field with guys with machine guns. Wow. Uh, I mean, it made a real impression on us. Um, yeah. And this was one of the only buildings where you could see over the wall into that space. Uh, mm. Scary. Anyway, mm. just to bring everything down a little here. No, no, no. But that's, that's, <laughs> but it uh, it, you got to go to Berlin to accept that award with the picture that we had yeah. just shown up. Yeah. With a rubber Kermit, I think there. <laughs> so you, from what I've read, you, joined or how did you audition join yeah. 
because you were 18 and a 18 and a half or something, right? Yeah, I was 18, somewhere between 18 and 19. Um, you, you met Carol Spinney, who passed away mm -hmm. a, a while back. Um, I, I met Carol in Atlanta, which is where I live, <clears throat> when I was about 18 at this, uh, sorry, I'm going to cough. <clears throat> I just drank uh, some, this is Windex. I like to keep. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a really step down from bleach, but yeah. okay. <laughs> Everybody's got their thing. Yeah. Uh, no, but I was, um, I went to a puppetry festival. They have these things all over the country, but I'd never been to one, even though I was an obsessive puppet guy. <clears throat> and Carol was going to be emceeing this opening night show with Oscar the Grouch. And I went, I was looking for a job. I, I, it didn't even cross my mind. I mean, I went because I, the Muppet guys were my heroes. I wanted to meet somebody who worked with the Muppets. And um, it just so happened I was the only guy that year that was doing Muppet-like puppets you know, Muppet style puppets that the, like, well, then the hand with the rod hands and that sort of thing. Right. <clears throat> and so we hit it off and I was in awe of him. I met him and his wife, Debbie. Um, and so it started, you know, this 40 something year friendship between us. <clears throat> and basically Carol is the person who more or less recruited me into the Muppets. Um, I didn't expect to particularly ever hear from him again. And he called me, <clears throat> I guess, three or four months later, you know, I'm an eight, I mean, I'm 18, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, um, uh, you know, I, I, Jim's looking for new people and I think you should uh, call them. Uh, I'm going to make an introduction. And I was overwhelmed. I mean, I was doing all these puppet things in Atlanta. I kind of saw this direction I was kind of trying to go in. I hoped I would meet Jim Henson someday. But the opportunity to meet him and be a part of what he was doing really just fell in my lap without any real effort from me. Um, and long story short too late it we i you know then went on to to meet jim and 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 was get had a chance to send a videotape to him and he hired me to to begin working on the muppet show during those years so what are you uh, what does low man on the puppet pole do when you first join the company yeah are well, you the one steam cleaning the puppets and yeah well not quite that no you, you, that takes skill uh no i'm sure <laughs> i think um i came in and and immediately jim put me on actually performing background parts, background characters. Because you know, if you remember on the Muppet show, there was that backstage area with oh yeah, all, a million characters. Yeah. <laughs> and Jim Chickens, would, fish, yeah. All, yeah. All that stuff. And Jim would basically, and we had those, what they call whatnots, which were Muppets that could be, eyes could be changed, they could turn into anything. Right. So Jim would basically say to the two or three of us who were kind of the new people, uh, I was the very new person, he would say, just grab any puppet, and while we're doing our dialogue, just get play in the back of the scene, do anything you want with any puppet you want, and try to upstage us. Uh, try to draw the attention and, and just play with that. And so that, so we were encouraged to, you know, distract from Kermit and Fozzie and Gonzo and the other characters uh, as a learning tool. I mean, that was our Stop case. stealing focus. Yeah, that, that we were being asked to do that. Nice. Uh, so that, that's the kind of person Jim was, you know. So I immediately started doing that. And my, my first show was with Alice Cooper, who I've had the great fortune to run into at some of the Comic-Cons since then. Yes, he does come to the Comic-Cons. Yeah, we did. Yeah, a, as long as did, it's near a golf course. That's right. That's right. We, we did a photo together of a puppet I built of him that, that he saw back when I met him the first, my first week on The Muppet Show. 40 years later, we reconfigured. We did that photo again at a Comic-Con a couple of years ago. Nice. Uh, so it was very cool to have that. Well, I think I've figured out our technical glitch. Oh, you want to pretend like we're using that? Yeah, yeah. I'm yes. I'm gonna see yeah, if yeah. I can uh, bring this back. We'll cut out. I, 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 last time. thing I want to do is have Weldon really angry with me. Yeah. Well, me too. Me too. We, we can't so, have that. <laughs> we're gonna bring it back. So Let's hang try on. Again. Okay. Can you hear it? No. But I can no. double it for you as we go. Damn it. I it's like I, I can it. hear it from your, from maybe bleeding from your headphones or something. See, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not quite what we had in mind. That's not what I'm looking for. Let me well, see. Hang on, hang on. Okay. What this is, is, mm -hmm. is um, something we should, you know, while Brian's uh, sweating trying to figure this out, I have to say that. Um, Brian has been incredibly kind to me uh, in terms of the work with Weldon. He's done three or four pieces 
at Comic Cons that we shot against a green screen now, I think. And this one, if we're able to show it, is um, he drugged Jeff Anderson into this. And uh, the idea was that uh, Jeff was a troll candidate. So we'd already done something where Brian um, applied to be a troll. And if you've seen Kaven, you probably saw this. It's, it's out there on, on the Kaven YouTube channel as well. Um, but this was th this piece that you're never going to see was uh, hang on don't say that just yet <laughs> let me know if you let me know if you hear okay. what um this is always the best stuff when people yeah let me just see if you can hear it i did an entire show one time with bob saget with kermit where we had no audio on a cruise ship and we screamed the entire show and it was better than if we had had a microphone <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Let's give you something to rant about if we. Yeah, definitely about. something to rant about. Technical. How weird, I know you, you regularly run videos on here. It's I do. And that's why I don't it's understand similar. why this, this has backfired so badly. Yeah. It, it's <laughs> All right, let me see. Okay. Can I try again? Nope. <laughs> I could uh, pull it up on my phone and just, I could do that. <laughs> <clears throat> So I'm sitting just far enough away from my laptop that I can't quite, I can't read anything that people are writing. Although I did see the note, Jesse from Jesse Oliver, who, now I've known J Jesse Oliver is one of those Muppet people, I'll just tell you, who's been around the Muppets for a very long time. He's an artist and a terrific person. So I'll shout out to him a little bit. He's a good guy. Uh, but we have those fans who are just constantly following what we did over the years, you know? And Jesse has, has gone on to be one of those people beyond my actual time with the Muppets. So that's kind of cool. Well, that's what's good. You really you really do spend a good amount of time with the fans that you do interact with at I these times. To. I try to. You know, um, it, none of this work for me was ever really about, it's what I said earlier, it was about something I just had to do, you know? And, and if, you're, if you go into puppetry with the idea that you're going to be... Um, recognized on the street and and you know all that celebrity stuff you know you're, you're in the wrong business uh that's that's not a reason to be a puppeteer i think with social media now you could probably be a puppeteer and you know people see you but but it's never why we were interested in the old days you know it, it was it was all about the work and and jim was this amazing kind of visionary guy who we all jumped on board with to support basically support his vision but we all were were uh, asked to collaborate on that. I mean, everybody was the workshop who built the puppets, the lighting guys on the floor. You know, everybody was was encouraged to to be collaborative in some way. So, who are your some of your favorite characters, whether you were the performer or not? Well, when I was a kid, I was always, for whatever reason, I was always drawn to Jim's characters, um, particularly Ernie and Kermit, because they're the ones I saw the most. And um, kind of ironic that I that I went on to to be them for a, for quite some time. Um, so I was always drawn to those, but all of them really. You know, it's interesting when I when I joined the Muppets, I had the really truly the good fortune of of coming in at a time when I was able to work along with Jim's basically his kind of original core team. It was Jim Henson, Frank Oz, Jerry Nelson, uh, Richard Hunt. And then Dave Goals, who's who's almost more my generation of a puppeteer. He's older than I am, uh, but we even even from Dave, from those five people in particular, I think I feel like I learned different Muppet styles and skills from each of those guys. Because I my first job, really beyond doing anonymous characters, was to be a stand-in for those guys, not an understudy, but a stand-in. Because, you know, if, 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 if Frank had two characters in the scene, if he was doing Miss Piggy and Fozzie right. Bernie in the scene, you can only do one at a time, effectively. Right. So I would do the other guy. And it, it's different to do that when you're standing next to the original guy because they'll, you know, it's a little bit like learning uh, Zen Buddhism, I think, in meditation. They'll smack you in the head if you do it wrong. <laughs> you know, you, you got to get it right. You know, you well, gotta, yeah, there has to be consistency. Yeah. You, you yeah, kids to, are really quick to pick up something slightly different. Yeah. And it's funny because um one of my favorite characters that you've performed 
um, only because anybody who knows me, who's been around me, knows that I'm, you know, pretty much a wise guy, a wise guy in a sarcastic way, uh, always poking fun, poking the bear. And um, you've been really cool of being half of the team of Statler and Waldorf. Oh, Waldorf, yeah. Well, which yeah. is, you played Statler, and those two guys, for me, have always been so hilarious because of just the absolute hilarious heckling that and the, how they're written is just funny because they yeah. just insert just so just snippets right. of their sarcasm. Well, you know, it's funny about those two. They were um, originally performed by Jim Henson played uh, Waldorf, the, the, the smaller guy. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pointing like I can touch him. Uh, right. I can see the screen. And, and then Statler was originally done for a special by Jerry Nelson, uh, probably the most accomplished voice artist we ever had as a part of the Muppets. I mean, just an amazing performer, tons of characters. And but but when the Muppet Show came around, because he hadn't really been super established yet as a character, Richard Hunt, another one of our great puppeteers, took up Statler. So Richard passed away in 1992. And that's around the time that I started doing him. So, so I inherited that character as, and that was Dave Gold's doing Waldorf, who inherited Jim's um, Waldorf. Mm. And I just, I love those two characters. And some of the most fun that that shot you just saw was something we shot at the Today Show at some point. That that photo. And when we would take these guys on location, we always had scripted material to shoot. But playing with Statler, you know, ad-libbing and improvising with Statler was great because he's he, off camera because he was kind of a, a bit of a dirty old man. And, <laughs> you know, I mean, I had a lot of fun with him. You know, he was, yeah, he was, I can was imagine. making fun of everybody, you know, it was, it was, I mean, I so much fun. So much right. fun. And you can get away with it because it's not you. It's right. Statler and Wolf right. who's doing it. And exactly. that was the greatest thing about those characters <laughs> is they were really, really great. Like I said, in those small bites that they would give them. Yeah. And then, to be honest with you, later on in the 80s, when I saw the movie um, Trading Places, yes, I yes. was like, they ripped off Statler and Waldorf. I mean, well, it was what, really, what, really what, funny. What you may not know is that um, Richard Hunt is playing a role as himself in that movie. Not as Richard, but I mean, he is an actor. Uh, who played Statler. So there was a lot of, uh, you know, Muppet crossover. Because I think Frank Oz is in that film as, as an actor. And then Richard plays the guy on the floor who's trying to do the trades for the two curmudgeonly old guys whose na the character names I've forgotten. Oh, who gets overwhelmed? Yeah, that's Richard Hunt, who played oh, our, okay. one of our main puppeteers, who play, who was Statler, the, the, the original Statler on the Muppet show. So they see a little Easter egg before Easter yeah. eggs were Easter eggs. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit on purpose, I think, that they were a bit like Statler and Waldorf. <laughs> that is really, really cool. For those who are just joining us, uh, we have the legendary Steve Whitmore with, with Mir here uh, with us. Um, done all the voices of all the characters you see on screen. His new show, Cave In with Weldon, the IT guy, is now on YouTube. Um, check it out. Uh, I make an appearance on it. Uh, we were trying to play uh, the episode with Jeff Anderson and myself. Yes, that Jeff Anderson, uh, <laughs> plus a few other great, great, great uh, episodes as well. Uh, the links are in the, uh, the comments below in YouTube. Say uh, hello to all my Twitter fans. Hello to all the YouTube fans, those watching on Facebook. Hi, good to see you again. Uh, I think we're even being beamed up here onto the uh, Enterprise. So it's good to wow. see that the crew yeah. of the Enterprise wow. is joining us as well. Um, we're being broadcast in a variety of stadiums throughout the world. Don't worry, the people are just cardboard cutouts. So uh, we are uh, we have a high high following with the show. So I just want to say we have that. A high High following with cardboard people. Exactly. <laughs> you know how to work with cardboard well. I, so um, yeah. you went on to do Fraggle Rock. Now, yeah. 
Yeah. I was getting into my late teens when Fraggle Rock, so I didn't jump into it. Right. Um, you know, it wasn't that age where Fraggle Rock was like, oh my God, Fraggle Rock. Don't yeah. get me wrong. The opening song is, you know, addictive. It kind of and is. once you get it in your head, you can't get it out of your head. The only way to get it out of your head is to listen to Baby Shark. And that, that can come. Oh, why did you say that? I, you know, I got to tell you something. I have just become aware of this thing, like within the last two weeks. Uh, and I might have to do a, a ripoff of it with Weldon at some point. I, it just seems like something he would do. Because it's oh, like they're trolling you. you know? Totally. Totally. Uh, Once they got you, like we just COVID. The one good thing about COVID, it got rid of jingles in your head like that. Yeah. Where yeah. everybody was, it wasn't that anyway. So, um, the the character you're most known for from yeah. Fraggle Rock is Wimbley. 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 Probably Wimbley Fraggle. I did Wimbley, and I, there was a dog on there named Sprocket that I also did, um, along with Hello. Um, hey, how you doing there, little Jesse? <laughs> I, I almost can't do the voice anymore. You know, it's funny. That was a that was a very youthful voice that I did for Wembley. Um, very innocent. He was it, it, he became this this character who couldn't make up his mind. He could never decide on anything, which was a little bit like me at that age. Uh, so it was kind of just I was just you know playing myself. But now, did you go for vocal training? I did not. I did not. And and I don't know whether it would have benefited me particularly or not. I was a, I was, I was always fairly musically inclined. Um, mm -hmm. and I had a reasonably good, you know, ear and singing voice. Um, and that was, you know, I mean, I was, I, I was nearly, nearly a high school dropout. I mean, a, a not a dropout, but a, a failure in high school. My things were drama and, and uh, music and, and doing puppet shows at assemblies, you know, I didn't. Well, yeah. Anything. Artists yeah. are, you know, it's funny because sometimes, Artists are like, I don't need a degree to yeah. get work. They just, they just want to go out and do the work. I, I kind of did that. And I, and so, and, and so voices, you know, it's funny people, a lot of times they say I'm the voice of a character and, and that's true, I guess, but I never think of myself as a voice artist, you know, I, and I never have yet. Most of the time when we've done new series with new characters, I've always tried to come up with an entirely new voice for a character that really isn't another character. But the the but the three that were always very similar to me were, um, and people will know these if they know the Muppets, Rizzo the Rat and Wembley Fraggle and this character named Bean Bunny. All three were characters that I did. There's Rizzo. And, and they're essentially the same voice. But what I discovered was after I got better at this, because when I started, I, I I could make a puppet work, but I had no training as an actor at all. And once I really learned more about character development, I realized that the distinction between the voices was really character. Right. And, and I had this conversation with Jim Henson once. You you might appreciate this as an actor. He said, um, I was about to do a new character, and I said, Jim, I just you know I know you love this voice that I do this this voice, but I've done it for two other characters. Can I, could I? I'd love to do something else. You know, I don't, I just hate doing the same voice over and over again all the time. Right. And, and Jim, you had to know Jim to appreciate, but he would do this thing where he'd go, well, you know, when, uh, when Burt Reynolds does a film, he always uses the same voice. And I thought, God, he's right. <laughs> what am I worried about? He's not worried about it. Why should I be worried about it? You well, know? I always joke that Yoda is just Grover yeah. with dyslexia. Yes. Yes, he kind of is. He he is Grover, and and the, and if you listen really closely, you might pick up even a little Miss Piggy there once in a while. You know. Well, yes, if you're the stealing highest, something from him yeah. when he's pulling yeah. on the food that he yeah. mine mine exactly exactly. Yeah. So you know, I mean, and and Frank would be the first person to say uh, he never thought of the Muppets, and of course they're puppets. We never thought of them as puppets. He thought of them as characters, and that really is the distinction. Um, you know, so I, so again, I still, I still really don't think of myself as a, as an accomplished voice person. Right. But you still, you, I mean, you were Kermit, you performed at Kermit for two dec over two decades, nearly three decades. I mean, and people come to love these characters and, mm -hmm. you know, generations of kids, parents sat their kids in TV and in front right. of these TV and movies to, and just fell in love with these characters. What do you think? What do you think was it about Kermit 
that made him so beloved? Well, um, I, I can sort of relate back to, you know, because before I was doing this, I was an obsessive Muppet fan pre-internet. So, you know, I had to wait for them to announce in TV Guide that there was going to be a Muppet special, you know. Mm. And um, I was, it was sort of clear that Kermit was Jim's central character. But I, I don't know, I always felt like, and, and I think Jim looked at it this way too in the early days, that the Muppet the puppets themselves were really tools. Um, you know, Jim Jim never wanted to be a puppeteer. He wasn't looking to be one. It was something, he, he wanted to work in television. And it was the Muppets that was the thing that he did that stuck. And so I think Kermit's appeal is really back to character again. I think it's Jim. Because you're really, when you watch the Muppets, or at least it used to be even more this way, when you looked at a particular character, you were sort of looking right through that character to the person underneath them, like you do with, with any actor, I guess. But 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 very much so with the Muppets, you're seeing a, an, an aspect of the personality of the person behind the character. And if that's a likable character or a funny character or even a villain, you know, you you like those things about... It, it, it's a funny sort of way of... Uh, everybody suspends their disbelief and you're right. connecting with the puppeteer so to such a large degree. And I would have never been able to even approach trying to keep a character like Kermit going had I not spent a dozen years working closely with Jim. You know, I wasn't working on being Kermit. I was just working next to him. Right, right, right. And, and observing how, who he was when he was doing it, what he looked like, with the facial expressions he made, how he approached the character. And, and really, and a really important thing was distinguishing the difference between the things he did that were just Kermit and then the things that Kermit did that were actually Jim, you know, and, and there's so many little affectations and little things that were Jim um, that, that I was able to recall and then build upon to, to try to do a faithful version of Kermit. So, uh, so, uh, so, uh, Chris, 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 Chris writes, uh, I always related to Kurt, the Kermit the most, the director trying to get this crazy <laughs> band of characters to put on a show. Yeah. Chris is a uh, filmmaker himself. Yeah. Uh, so uh, he can relate to especially the Muppet show, getting sure, the gang sure. together to put the show on with so many, you know, especially with the celebrity yeah. guest star. Well, it, and, it, and, it's, and it, it was kind of the psychodrama. I mean, I mean, all of us were the crazies centering around the, the thing in the middle of the wheel that was Jim. Right. So, so it, was, it really was what we were doing, exaggerated a little bit. <laughs> you know, we were all insane. <laughs> we, I always used to say, what would, I, what would I possibly be doing if I hadn't, if this hadn't worked out? I, I can't even imagine doing anything else. You know, yeah. It's very weird. Uh, it, it is... Um... It is amazing to see these characters become so part of people's lives of, and childhoods and stuff like that. And to see them um, really get attached and really uh, wait for each movie. I remember even as a young adult w waiting to see what the next Muppet movie would entail. Yeah. Um, yeah. And things like that, and it, it was it was a lot of fun. And now here you are with your new project, uh -huh. uh, Weldon, right? Um, with Caven, with Weldon, the IT guy. What what was it about having a character that's an internet troll? Was it the times that we live in that got you to come up with this character? What what inspired you to create Weldon? You know, it's interesting with the Muppets, and I, I seem to think this was the same way with Jim, and, and it, characters would come from so many different places in so many different ways. Sometimes they served a particular function, so you needed a character. But Weldon is an example of two things uh, for me. One is that I had this, I had this sort of weird sort of version of Weldon swimming around in my head, not as a character, but as a physical puppet. For, for quite some time. I just wanted to do this weird little creature with a couple of these big fang teeth and horns. I, 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 this, I, I don't know where this came from. It came out of my head. 
with really skinny little arms, like super skinny arms and giant hands on the end. It was just a design thing. I, I sketched this on a piece of paper and I thought, someday I'm gonna build a puppet like that or have it built. I didn't even know I could build it. I ended up building Weldon myself, but, but that's another story. Um, so that's part of it. But the other part was that I was looking at trying to do a simple idea like what we do with Weldon, which is basically what you and I are doing now. Weldon takes phone calls, the, assist, the equivalent of phone calls over the internet from his viewers. And we talk about whatever. Weldon wants to know what their most miserable thing in their life is because he's a troll. <laughs> um, and he became a, a troll because I had gone to a local uh, production group here uh, I think I could say Adult Swim. And, and we were talking about trying to do something on their uh, website, which I don't know whether you've seen Adult Swim. You, you and I have talked about this, but it's uh, some really spacey stuff. Yeah, it's uh, trippy. Yeah, you, if you haven't gone, not, not, not the regular Adult Swim TV thing, go to their website because it's, right. it's out there. It's out there. And, it, and it's bizarre stuff. And I thought it would be fun to have a character on their website once a week who does the best of the worst of Adult Swim. And he would come on and he would do essentially what I'm doing with Kaven. And he would basically, I'd have all this material to work with because they had a week's worth of all this crazy stuff. And we would chop into little pieces and Weldon would criticize it. You know, lighthearted like he does, but he would yeah. criticize, he's a troll. And I thought, well, it's, it's the internet. So it, it, a troll, he's gotta be a troll. Plus I've been trolled on my previous website. So I know what that feels like. So um, I thought it'd be fun uh, to do that. And then, then it didn't work out with Adult Swim. So I just decided we needed to do this on our own, which was a massive undertaking uh, to try to get it off the ground and, and do this simple thing that we do. As you know, sitting where you are, it, yeah. it takes a lot of work to get to this point. It does. And um, big ups to your apprentice that you have with you, your partner oh, yeah. that that's working yeah. with you. Liam, very, very yeah. talented and Young bright guy. Is, Liam Nelson, he, he's, he's actually, he's 21 years old. Uh, he, you think Liam is older because he's incredibly tall. It, yeah. it, it's the first thing you notice about it. He's about seven. I literally, old. since we, when we first met was at a yeah. comic con, yeah. this, the same comic con where the actor who plays the new actor who plays Chewbacca in the new yeah. movies was uh, also in attendance. Uh, and I had confused the two. Yes. Uh, I think the, the the new Chewbacca actor is from Sweden or something. Yeah. And um, and he is as tall as Chewbacca in real life. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. so I, when I saw him, I was like, oh, I loved your work in, in the new Star Wars movies. And he's like, huh? <laughs> well, that's Liam. And, yeah. and he's an impressive young guy. Uh, I met Liam kind of on a flute by accident at a at a film conference here in Atlanta. And uh, I thought he, I figured he was in his th early 30s, J mostly because of his height. I mean, he's a young guy. Huge. Yeah. But he, but he now has started his own production company called New Heaven Productions. Uh, we sort of co-built a space here that I'm sitting in now uh, to use as a small studio. And, um, you know, he uses it for a lot of other projects and I use it for Kaven. Um and he's, he, you know, we, we do this together and we really do it out of, you know, the passion for it. It has to be because <laughs> there's no money involved. There's no, there's no budget. So, so we're doing it again, because we kind of have to, it's, it's a, it's a creative outlet, but it was also kind of a, an experience for him and I to just start working on something. You can talk about working on something. Yeah. You don't know whether you're going to have chemistry with people right. until you do something. So and it's, been, it's been that. If anything can inspire someone to get off their ass and do, is a pandemic. Well, now what are you going to do? Yeah. That's kind of why I had been talking about doing my podcast streamcast, which you are now obviously yeah. watching and listening to yeah. um, for a couple of years where I'd talk about it at cons and stuff. But, but then I was like, well, now I, I got to put up or shut yeah. up because yeah. what am I, I can't do the excuse that I'm on the road anymore. I can't do right. the excuse, you know, that, Oh, I don't have the stuff yet. So here we are. Yeah. We we were um, thinking about we we started doing this before there was any you know about six months before yeah oh well, yeah I remember everything happened and I thought well we were we were ahead of our time we were all set when the pandemic came about you know and and the first, yeah the first show that we did I guess into February or the March episode we only do this show once a month because it's all I can manage to pull together we yeah. we do a big production number in the middle of each one 
which is really ambitious. Which and, for those who are just joining us, we are talking to the legendary <laughs> puppeteer, actor, producer, Steve Whitmere, uh, who's talking about his new show on YouTube, Cave In with Weldon, the IT guy. Uh, welcome everybody from uh, Twitch and YouTube and Facebook. Um, he, it's been uh, incredibly uh, fascinating seeing the episodes that you've been putting out. And it is, it is full fledged production value, green screens, voiceover work, all this type of stuff. Um, I'm going to see if I can attempt to show one of the things that we put together. No, okay. I'm going to try, I'm going to try the other thing first. Oh, okay. Maybe it'll play. Maybe that will be better. So if you, you can any, hear it, let you know me what, know. If you can't hear it, then, uh, Show a minute of it because it looks kind of cool too. Yeah, we'll just. Yeah, okay. We could talk <laughs> about it otherwise. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we could talk over it if you want. Um, I, I realize I'm playing with something here. Let's see if this works. Okay, not yet. Not hearing it, but it sounded like mm -hmm. your voice came out of your mouth when you spoke. I know. <laughs> How you doing there, Brian? We could just dub it. <laughs> Can you hear it now? I have a flip phone. Yes, a little bit. Oh, how 90s. Yeah, I'll shut up. What do you tell people? Tell them it's a burner. So that if you spot me coming around that corner, you're just going to walk out on that phone, not say goodbye? That's a lot of wasted minutes. That's the discipline. You know, there's a reason why they call it a burner. Could be an omen. Yeah, it is what it is. It's either that, or we both better go and do something else, pal. I don't know how to do anything else. Neither do I. Don't much want to either. Neither do I. You know, I have this uh, recurring dream. I'm sitting at this big banquet table and all the victims of all the hacks I ever worked are sitting there at this table and uh, they're staring at me with these big black eyeballs because they had eight ball hemorrhages from their systems crashing. And there they are, these big balloon people because I found them two weeks after they'd been online and the neighbors reported the smell. And there they are, all of them just sitting there. What do they say? Pop. No talk? No, they just pop. They're balloon people. They don't have anything to say. We just look at each other. They look at me. And uh, that's it. That's the dream. I have one uh, where I'm drowning. And I got to wake myself up and start breathing or I'll die in my sleep. You know what that's about? Yeah. Take it enough time. Enough time to do what you want to do? That's right. Well, what do you want to do? Take my head out of the toilet. Uh, I don't think that's a dream. <laughs> <sighs> you know, we're sitting here, you and I, like a couple of regular fellas. I mean, uh, you do what you do. I do what I got to do. And now that we've been face to face, if I'm there and I got to put you away, I won't like it. But I tell you, if it's between you and some poor bastard whose wife you're going to turn into a widow, brother, you're going down. <coughs> There's a flip side to that coin. What if you do got me boxed in and I got to put you down? Because no matter what, you will not get in my way. We've been face to face, yeah. But I will not hesitate not for a second. Yeah, well, maybe that's the way it'll be. Or, uh, who knows? Mm -hmm. Maybe we never see each other again. Yeah, maybe not. Can I tell you? I don't care. You never let yourself get attached to anything. You're not going to work out in 30 seconds flat if you feel the heat around the corner. 
Oh, yeah, well, it ain't the corner where I'm feeling the heat. It's my ass. Ah, You're ah, in your room, pal. Oh, 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 too, too, too much heat. Too much heat. Woo. Good thing I'm pre-recorded. <laughs> so uh that was one of the things we shot together uh i had a green screen in my house right, right wanted right. to set up a recreation from that very famous coffee house scene from the movie heat pacino de niro first time together um <laughs> and that was a lot of fun i gotta yeah, say fun. when you when you emailed me with the idea yeah. uh it was we were all in lockdown and i was like anything you want to do steve i'm on board well, and I appreciate that. You've, you've been that way at the Comic-Cons too, and I very much appreciate it. We've done some fun things. And that was, that was I, I don't know, that was probably the lowest key thing we've ever done with Weldon. But I just thought, I've, I love that scene. It's one of my favorite movie scenes ever, the, the yeah. original. And I thought, what fun it would be. And then I thought, wait a minute, Brian's at home, and, and he, you know, he looks a little like uh, De Niro. We can make that work. <laughs> I can I can almost see it even being the um, cantina scene from Star Wars with Han Solo and Guido. Yeah. That could be next. But in that case, who would have shot? So if we've been able to hear the sound there, let's go back we'll to, our, sure. to our original okay. plan. Yeah. And because I know the fans are going to get a huge kick out of this one. There we go. Wait. Hello, my name is Weldon. Hi, Weldon. Jeez, I'm a troll, not an alcoholic. Who cares? If you keep this up, I might become one. <laughs> now, shut up. I am here to address you, my fellow union members of Brothers United in the Tradition of Trolls, Holy Order 11. We IT guys, internet trolls that is, will not be ignored, no matter how many firewalls they put up. But I know there are troll candidates out there who have what it takes and are just waiting to be taken. <laughs> and I'm just a troll to do it! <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, uh, matter of fact, I uh, gotta see a guy about a goat right now. <laughs> uh, until I get back, just uh, bicker amongst yourselves. Uh, uh, the drinks are on me! <laughs> Idiots. What this guy's so late? Oh, there you are. This is Weldon. What? The perfect recruit. You're kidding. No, I want you to meet Jeff. What? Jeff? What, in a cave? Oh, this is where I live, Jeff. Who so, are you? Uh, my name is Weldon, the IT guy. Oh. Yeah, you know, Brian here is a troll candidate. I want to emphasize candidate, but. Uh, a what candidate? A troll. You see, I'm an internet troll. Yeah. Am I here to be a troll? Why? Well, no, no, you're not being a troll. No. You're just, um, you're really good at, um, you know, opinions. That's uh, right. That's right. You are, yeah, and, and, and trolls happen to be very opinionated. Okay, I do have opinions. So okay. it's more like a trollster, not a trollster. Oh, I, that's good. I like that. You've been working on that, huh? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So, you know, I mean, I mean, we have to test your qualifications, but Brian said you were coming in, and we just need to find out whether you'll uh, fit into the whole scheme of things here. Test my qualifications. All yeah. Right. I can't wait to see what happens next. Yeah, I can't either. Well, you know, we're, we're here in the cave. That That's quite a, an important part of being a troll. It's good if you like being alone in the cave. He likes wine. I told him there was wine in the cave. Uh, do you like wine in the cave? Oh, yeah, for sure. We can do that. We can, we can, we can work. We can get that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, but just no wine. winding in the cave. No, 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 no. Make sure we're talking wine, not wine. Well, it's cold in here. Yeah, that's that's another thing. I, you, you, you will want to eventually be naked. Thank you. Wait, I like naked. I didn't know. I didn't know nothing about the naked part. Oh no, no, that. that well, I hadn't told you yet. You, you do as well. Yeah, you have to be naked. I don't know why he always gets me involved in these things. I don't want to be naked in a cave. Sure you do, buddy. It's great. No, it's not. Well, actually, it's miserable. And that's why, that's why it's what trolls do, because we love, we love other people's misery, man. All right, well, yeah. I'm pretty miserable at the moment. Perfect, perfect. We're, you're doing your job. I told you, fine. You're, you're doing it. a great job. You got this guy miserable. Do you, I have to ask you, do you want to be a troll? I don't know. Is he a troll? Well, he's getting close. He's very close. Uh, I don't know. If he's a troll, I'm not sure I want to be a troll. Would it make you miserable to be a troll? I 
don't know. I gotta hang around with this guy. Yes. Get a little bit of yes. Perfect. Perfect. You guys are gonna make a great team. You're a great team. Bear. See, I like that team. Yeah. Team. Even, even trolls have team spirit. Yes, we do. Misery does love company. It does, doesn't it? This is the one thing trolls love. Perfect. Perfect. We are Saturn. Welcome. You guys are official. I'm gonna you eat. You'll get your certificates in the mail. And then you'll get your assignments from Troll HQ. Perfect. We're going to go find the one. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Give him the high five. You get a certificate. Boys, welcome to the Troll World. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. People don't realize. I mean, we did that in, um, we did that in Richmond. At uh, GalaxyCon Richmond, which was just before everything shut down earlier this year. And yeah. what's really ingenious that I thought you had written in the opening segment when you're addressing your Brotherhood of Trolls that it was a gathering and that you had this call that you had to go to a meeting uh, to, to meet with Jeff and I. And then drinks are on me and all the trolls get all rowdy, which yeah. works <laughs> you know because why, the right? background audio... What people yeah. don't understand for the viewers out there, <laughs> if you've been to any of the Galaxy Cons, which me and Steve highly recommend, these guys are one of the yeah. best convention yeah. people yeah. ever. They have all sorts of genres at their conventions. It's a completely fan interactive um, experience. And one of the things they always have is wrestling. They have an actual huge wrestling ring. They have their own wrestlers. They reenact different pop culture back and forths, you know, yeah. adversaries yeah. dressed up, you know, really funny stuff. And then legit wrestling as well. Right. So we were given one of these rooms, one of these like offices off the main convention hall, right. but near where the wrestling ring had been set up. With announcers, as always, they're like, oh, and he's got a chair. And, you know, they're all being loud. So <laughs> we were doing our best to muffle sound yet or be loud enough to override what we're hearing. But yeah. I love the way you covered it in the writing because it does sound like the trolls are getting out of hand Up with all the free booze yeah. that you just promised them. Well, that was. <laughs> I, I had to do something because I thought, oh, my God, I don't know if you remember this either, but I, I have these great wireless microphones, but I only had two. And I didn't remember that until I remembered, oh, there's Jeff's going to be here's going to be three. So how do I record everybody, especially with the wrestlers right outside the door yelling? And so our, our audio there was actually not great. Uh, it was kind of what I record. And I shot that with an iPhone. I shot, yeah. shot right. it's it quite good. You can get some good stuff with an iPhone, but the audio I ended up using was neither microphone, like really expensive microphone. It was the audio off the iPhone. It was a nightmare trying to make that one work. Uh, and, and some of that, I have to say, I, oh, I should mention Jim Lewis, who is a longtime associate of mine with the Muppets, who is also helping me write uh, all the material for Caden. A lot, most of it's not written, but, yeah. but Jim is the icing on the cake with the ideas. And he, really shaped that into something, the advanced piece. Uh, what we were yeah. doing was improvised, but, right. but the rest of it was, um, you know. Which I, that's, that's the reason why anytime you ask, I'm like, I'm totally in because you do encourage the improv aspect of things. Um, I personally think we get along really good when we throw back and forth. Um, and and so it, it's always fun when you're like, oh, we're going to do another Weldon thing. And that's the one the downfall of not being together at these cons. Yeah. But when you reached out to me, when you emailed me and said, Hey, do you mind setting this up? And I'm like, you're in luck. I do have a green screen and we can do this. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's funny, like we've all become almost uh, independent studios. Like yeah. everybody is by like when the yeah. pandemic happened, mm. finding microphones, webcams, lighting, yeah. it went out like that. Yeah. And, wait a minute, where do we get all this stuff from? <laughs> China, which is shut down at the moment. Right. So everything like, so the supply chain went deep, deeply like scarce. And it's yeah. funny because once again, I've been collecting lights and cameras and microphones uh -huh. for my podcast and stuff for the past four years. So 
it literally was like the break here in case of emergency kind of, well, now uh -huh. I'm stuck home. <laughs> oh, let me learn how to use this. Right, I still right. obviously need to make sure I'm, I'm working my sound. It's funny because I just installed a new sound mixing program oh. on my computer. So this is the first podcast that I'm fiddling with it. And I thought I have everything right. Obviously, I got to watch more YouTube videos and how to use it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> At least they're out there, though. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. But one other thing, you know, um, where, do you, where do you see puppetry going with more and more of the rise of CGI in movies? I mean, it was great with these new Star Wars movies. They brought back puppetry as opposed to a CGI Yoda. Right. It, it is interesting. Um, and that that sort of back and forth has been going on ever since the first CGI characters were done. By the way, I should say really quickly, if I think it was the first completely computer generated character was done by Jim Henson. Um, it was a character called Waldo that we did on the show called the Jim Henson Hour. If you go to if you go to Florida and see the Muppet 3D thing there, mm -hmm. there's a little cartoony looking guy who floats around. I did that character, but I ran him with this giant mechanical rig. It was very crude by today's standards. Right. But he was computer generated and he could interact with the puppets. And that to me speaks to Jim's desire to just storytell. It didn't have to be puppets. He 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 really was trying to do effective storytelling. And he embraced all, you know, every time there's any new technology, he was looking at how he could use that in his work. And right. sometimes one of the things I get very excited about is, and I can't afford to do it right now, but at some point is just the enhancements that I believe are possible with traditional practical puppets, things that are very hard to do from a puppeteering standpoint. Right. You, you could do certain CGI effects, and I'm talking very subtle stuff. Keep it mostly puppetry, but add items and things. Uh, it's something I really look forward to exploring. I don't think. Well, I, I mean, you know, you have people like Andy Serkis, yeah. uh, who is pretty much an actor, also puppeteer in a weird way. Right. You put on the suit, you glue on the ping pong balls, yeah. they get the grit of you, and you still have to act in, you know, him being either Gollum or yeah. one of the Planet of the Apes or what have you. Right. Um, so the artistry of movement in mm -hmm. large scale puppetry is still there uh, as far as smaller scale i mean it's stuff like that where in post-production wires can be removed now that right. you still need someone who can nimbly be laying on the floor one hand up here another one yeah. looking at a screen this way while the motion's coming from up here right it's still an art form it's an athletic ability sometimes mm -hmm. i feel puppetry in that sense I, I love the idea that and and i think it's where puppetry is great as long as the puppets are effective uh, the fact that you know it, it, you 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 know you can play off of weldon when you're there with him same right. with the other muppet characters which you can't quite do if, if it's computer generated. You, sometimes I know I know uh, filmmakers will use a puppet for an actor to play off of, and then it will be computer generated over the top of that puppet. Um, right. But but the you know the 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 art of a puppeteer becoming a character in an ongoing way that they continue to perform as that individual character for perhaps a lifetime. Um, doesn't happen very often. And, and those characters who are ongoing for such a long period of time can then perform next to an actor and they bring into the room with them the same kind of history that any other actor would bring in. Uh, mm. You know, the, all the appearances they've done add up to that moment in a way. Absolutely. Uh, and I, I, I love that with the style of puppetry that the Muppets have always done. It, I think it's a little less so at this point. Uh, it's a little more about getting product out. However, well, it's yeah. there. You know, it's still there. You know, you bring up, um, you know, where it is now. How do you? Uh, I know there's a del delicate subject. How do you see um, the Disney Corporation handling the property? You know, it's a funny thing, and 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 this is going to sound like semantics. Um, even when I was a part of the Muppets at Disney, I was very careful 
and I, and I know what you mean. And I know why we do that, but not to say Disney does this or Disney does that. I, right. I'm very much an individualist. And so I would always say it's not, it's not this giant corporation. It's that person. It's right certain, there. Yeah. It's, it's certain person, people. You know? yeah. So I always tried to be very careful uh, to, to point at people if there was a, if there was a compliment or, or criticism. Mm. Um, and I, I, I think, but I'm, but I'm going to do it anyway. I think as an overall approach, my experience was consistently that the various executives who were put in charge of the Muppets and there've been, and their names are Legion and they've a lot of them over the course of 14 to 16 years or whatever it's been, they didn't quite, they either didn't quite understand what it took for the Muppets to stay connected to the audience or they understood it and it just seemed counter to a corporate direction that at the end of the day was about reporting back to shareholders. Right. You know, I found that when I first got there, we would sit in a boardroom with people, you know, and we would talk about stuff and the puppeteers kind of over here and the executives kind of over there. And, and, you know, somebody would say something like, well, you know, when Jim was alive, we all felt included. And, and it was a lot of feeling stuff, you know, a lot of, a lot of touchy feely kind of, you know, we were, we collaborated and it felt great. And there was a spirit and these oh, whenever people. whenever I look back at photos of that time, yeah. you know, yeah, you you look at this photo and you either say, "Oh, that's um, air supply back from 1973," <laughs> or it's some commune in Colorado that went on to build Apple, or yeah. you know, you can tell that you you know, the artists when they were all the artists were all in control yeah. of the content how we're going to do it how we're going to represent ourselves and blah 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 and you're right once corporate gets into it and they manage numbers and analytics and this toy we want to sell instead of that toy yeah. i mean my very 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 brief um stint with disney with the uh clerks animated series okay. um you, you where you know we were constantly being asked to change scripts and no, this is not how we think it should be. And meanwhile, like you came to us about wanting to do the cartoon, yeah, yeah. you know, um, and this is who we are. Same, you know, so when in a corporate machine, which look, everybody wants to get paid. There's no, sure. There's nothing wrong with wanting to get paid. And if it's an outlet that can give you the biggest, big, excuse me, biggest exposure, yeah. go for it. Um, but then there should be a point in time where you're like, well, this is this is all they know and breathe. Let them let them yeah. be their artist self and we'll go from there. So well, and it's interesting too, because my I always felt what the whole time I was there that there was a way to there really was an effective way to integrate what that artistic side that it was gonna take for the Muppets to continue to stay connected to the audience and the concerns of the corporation because that artistic side is why the Muppets will bring you money. You know, right, right. that's what it's going to take. And, and yeah. I could never quite get people to understand that to the point where we put it into practice. Yeah. I, I, I completely agree with you on that yeah. one. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens. You know, yeah, here we yeah, are now in these weird times where I people know. went off the main grid to find other entertainment things yeah. because the main factories of content on, in, on the studios all had to shut down, yep. but people who were home start, generated their own home spun homegrown content. And it's getting traction in very melt, you know, different ways and, and yep. stuff like that. And, um, yeah. you know, you never know what, <laughs> what can lead you down a path. It's a weird thing that a pandemic did, but we'll see what happens. Maybe, maybe Steve, it's the good, good side of that, hopefully. It's the good side of that. Yeah, I, I'm hoping that this does, there's going to be a gluttony of yeah. new material from people yeah. just being home. I mean, hopefully it's not everybody writing stories about how they were staying home and, and they, <laughs> yeah. they built things because they yeah. were stuck at home. So, uh, Steve, we're going to get to the part of the show that I like to call the uh, speed round. Yeah. So we're going to uh, we're gonna okay. give up, uh, we're Sounds gonna give great. you some speed round questions. It's okay. pretty simple. It's just A or B. Um, okay. You do, you, you, you do, you choose what you think is more appropriate. We're going to give you some music here okay. and then we're going to start. Okay. Stream of consciousness. Here we go. 
All right, here we go. Okay. Speed round questions. Performing or producing? Performing. Kermit or Ernie? Oh, my God. Uh, Kermit, I think. Long flight or long drive? Uh, flight. Angry or happy? Happy. <laughs> mask or no mask? Mask. Comedy or drama? Drama, oddly. Booth or table? Uh, round table. Nice. I like cool. I like how that sounds. I like that. <laughs> Weldon or Oscar? Oh my god! I, oh my god! That's impossible. I can't answer that. No. Uh, yeah, you know, I can't answer that. I, I, I love Carol Kimmel. <laughs> Henson or Oz? Oh, Henson. Pinocchio or a real boy? Oh my goodness! I uh, a Pinocchio. Mm, Pino I guess Pinocchio. In my case, I have to right. Buying or selling? Uh, buying, I think. Skeksis or Fraggles? Oh, Skeksis. <laughs> Love or money? Love. Beaker or Professor Honeydew? Oh, Beaker. Poor Beaker. Be beaker. Marionette or Puppet? Uh, oh, Hand Puppet. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Batman or Superman? Batman. Future or past? Mm, future. Favorite curse word? Oh, I just have to give you one? Yeah, your favorite. Uh, a lot of damn these days. A lot of damn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then finally, we call this show The O'Hollerant. What is your biggest pet peeve? Okay, serious answer. I'm not going to try to be funny. My serious pet peeve is when people don't do what they say they're going to do. I always they, try. I always try. And I think everybody should try to do what they commit to. There you go, people. People be men of your word and definitely follow through in doing what you say, say what you mean. One you're in a bad year. you're in a bad year, sir, for trying to get people to do what they say. I know. Say what they mean. Avoid the fake news yeah. out there. Avoid um <laughs> The craziness that is these theories that I see being put yeah. out there. But Stephen, uh, sound like your parents. Steve, thank you so much for being a part of the O'Hollerant. My uh, apologies to Weldon for the technical difficulties that we had with the sound. I'm glad we finally got it resolved. Me too. Me too. Um, I look forward to working with you again anytime, anywhere with you, sir. Absolutely. I'll be there. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I also want to talk to you really quickly before we say goodbye, because you're not only this incredible puppeteer artist, uh -huh. you're also an endearing human being when it comes oh. to animal, uh, uh, animal sanctuaries and right. You are good friends with the ever so famous oh. Tippi Hedren from Hitch Hitchcock's birds. Yeah. Uh, movies. And um, you're on the board for um, Shambhala. Yeah, which is uh, Shambhala.org, which is a large cat um, sanctuary. sanctuary. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to play this. I do have here ready. I'm going to play their commercial, and we'll come right back to you here. So, okay, sure. Let's sure. Just watch this. The Shambhala Preserve, a unique 60-acre sanctuary for exotic felines who are orphans or cast-offs from zoos, circuses, and safari parks, as well as from private owners who soon discover why these wild animals can never be suitable as pets. Originally the set for the 1981 film Roar, Shambhala was transformed by screen star Tippi Hedren to offer these magnificent animals a protected life of serenity and good health in this secluded riverine setting. In 2009, Tippi passed Shambhala's director's gamble to Chris Gallucci, VP of Operations. Gallucci has been a key staff member at the preserve since 1975. 
Maintained by the Rohr Foundation, a nonprofit tax exempt charitable organization, Shambhala not only provides a safe haven for animals with no place to go, but offers many ways for you to be involved. Come to the preserve for one of our monthly safari tours. Visit the Shambhala Trading Post. Join our pride by becoming a member. Volunteer. Become a wild parent with special parent days through our adoption program. And for truly memorable experiences during our summer months, you can attend our special sunset safaris or even spend an entire night in one of our authentic African tents. For more information on visiting the Shambhala Preserve and how you can help to make a difference, go to www.shambhala.org. Now, this isn't the Tiger King situation. This is a board run actual sanctuary rescuing, like it said in the commercial, uh, large cats, game cats, and stuff like that. Um, for people from either smaller zoos that close down, from other sanctuaries that can't uh, continue, or for individual owners who realize that it's ridiculous owning a large cat. Yeah, it, it is. It is. And I, I, um, I just, my head is off to them all the time. They, they are legitimate is the word for it. Um, their particular, you know, place is, um, it really is a sanctuary. I mean, they do allow the public to come in once in a while. And that video might give the impression it's more than they actually do. It's really only one weekend per month. The rest of the time is devoted strictly to letting these animals live out their lives in peace. Uh, and nobody goes in the cages with them. They don't roll around on the ground with them. They don't, you know, sell them or breed them or put them in movies or, you know, they re it really is a place for these animals to live out their lives. And they've gone through a tough year, as you might imagine. You know, all those things you just saw them doing, they now can't do because the place is closed. Right. They're, they're also out in Canyon Country in um, north of Los Angeles, and they are always under the threat of the fires when they happen. Um, they, they are in a position where they can actually evacuate all the cats, but it's, it's an insane thing. I bet. You know, imagine trying to get those, those, I mean, they know how to do it, but the, to get those guys in cages and haul them out of there, you know, it's, it's not what they're, not what they're about. And I have such admiration for Tippy, of course, but for Chris Gallucci, who now is basically running the place along with, uh, Trudy Farley and Bill Dow. Um, and and they're, they're, it's just a great core group of people, a lot of wonderful volunteers. And I've just been incredibly fortunate to, to be able to become their friend. And, and, and you know, I shot that video and, and put it together and, and other things with them as well. I've tried to be supportive and there were times when I could support them doing things with Kermit as well. Um, but just, to get, just to, to get to know Tippy over the last, God, it's been 30 years now, you know, uh, She's, she's a wonderful person and completely dedicated the last 40 to 50 years of her life to, to the care of these animals. And it's a hard job. Um, so, you know, you can donate to them. I, I, I always ask people to try to do that and, and it can only help. I mean, any amount helps. And if you're ever in California, after the pandemic, find them and go visit the place. It's an amazing place. You, you are actually quite close to the animals. You don't touch them, obviously. Um, but you can certainly see these animals up close, which is magnificent. You know? Well, sir, your, your, your heart, uh, stretches to many different, uh, causes, species, and, uh, you're doing, uh, you're doing some really good work. And, uh, that was my first concern being out in California with all mm -hmm. that acreage. How yeah. are they handling any of the fires? Uh, but also, you know, money is tightening up with people, you know, millions of people out of work, but also, yeah. you yeah. know, and then the, the top dollar type of donors all right now scrambling just to uh, donate to political parties to, yeah. Yeah. to push their agendas. So That's it's true. tough all around, um, especially when normal operating um, costs never stop. Right. And uh, yeah. the ability to bring in revenue from visitors and stuff like that. Same thing with theaters yeah. you know, movie theaters, but also live theater in the New York area, especially Broadway, your really? local, just your local bar can't have that band anymore in indoor spaces. It's a, it's definitely a huge adjustment and stuff like that. But, yeah. um, 
Yeah. I got to say thank you so much for once again agreeing to coming on this sure. week. Um, we'll definitely got to do this again. Uh, yeah. For those, if you want to look to uh, where they can reach out to Steve, I've put uh, in the comments uh, on the YouTube page and uh, the other page on Twitch and also on Facebook links to the cave in series um, with uh, Weldon, the IT guy that could be found on YouTube. Uh, I've put the link in for Shambhala.org for the cat preserve, uh, but also his uh, Instagram uh, Steve Whitmere's Instagram is another great follow that you guys should do. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Steve Whitmere, thank you so much, Steve. We'll see you next time. Yes, sir, Brian. Thank you. And thanks to everybody. I appreciate it. And please give my best to Weldon and tell them, I'll tell Weldon I'll be in touch. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll leave him a note. He won't actually speak to me, but we'll, I'll Damn edit it. the message through. Yeah. I know. All right. I'm sure I'm going to get a flaming email soon. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> thank you, Steve. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Woo. What a fantastic episode talking to Steve. Uh, technical glitches, but, you know, I had a funny feeling when you're dealing with an internet troll, you may catch a virus. And I think that's what happened here. We may have caught a virus from Weldon, the IT guy. So um, I got to say, I the little kid in me, really got got fed today with uh, hearing stories of the great, amazing crew and cast and Jim Henson and Frank Oz from The Muppet Show, Sesame Street, Fraggle Rock, from The Dark Crystal, from obviously, you know, Cave In with Weldon, the IT guy, and many, 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 many more. Um, this has been a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal time. I'm, I just, I hope you guys had a great time. Um, we're going to have uh, some spectacular guests in the upcoming weeks. Uh, as a matter of fact, next week, we're bringing on wrestling legend. Also, he has an amazing podcast. Uh, Brimstone will be on next uh, Friday at nine o'clock. Uh, so come on for that. Um, we'll be talking to him plus some others. Um, well, I got to say big thank you to everybody from Twitch who came from J Muse's raid. Thank you guys for sticking out Trey Mock, Captain Sparrow. Uh, we got um, uh, Gem Girl. We also had Danger Girl AC. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I Figgy, I Figgy, Spooks Tooth, um, plus all the people from Facebook, Anthony. Thank you, Frischetti. Well, I'll be talking to you soon, Anthony. Uh, also, uh, Angie Contreras. Uh, who else do we got that I missed? Uh, Good Badger, Trey Mock, I did say. Um, J-Man, thank you so much. Mel Blank 22 on the YouTube channel. Jesse Oliver, thank you for coming over to my channel and watching the show there. Broncos number one, thank you so much, sir. Saba Khan on YouTube uh and all the rest i gotta tell you please do me a favor if you can um like the uh page follow along on both facebook and on twitter and on instagram and on subscribe onto youtube uh soon i'll be setting up my twitch to get subscriptions follow on twitch tv at brian seal hollering uh, where I do more there with gaming, but I'll also do some uh, karaoke on the side there as well. I'm sad to hear that uh, Twitch is not going to have the karaoke anymore. I just started doing it, and I get this notice that they're ending it at the end of the year. Very sad. I hope they find some way to replace it. I had a blast with that. I didn't even get to do a duo yet with Jay Muse. What the hell? I think he wanted to do Secret Lovers. I believe that's what it was. Like, Secret Lovers, that's what we are. I think it was something like that. But anyway, thank you, everybody, watching from all over, from Grandma's Old TV, for you sitting on the plane watching it on your phone, to the networks in Eastern Europe playing it on their news feed, uh, for anybody watching it on their tablet while they're babysitting, to the stadiums of empty people, thank you so much, uh, to, the to the crew 
of the Star Trek Enterprise. I see you, Mr. Sulu. I see you right there. And and I think that's Chekhov. I'm not sure. But thank you guys so much. We'll be back next week, 9 o'clock with Brimstone. Uh, I am Brian O'Halloran. Follow us up there up top. I'm going to say uh, thank you and uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend, folks. I'll probably pop on again on Twitch at some point this weekend. You'll never know. But uh, thank you again, folks. Enjoy. And we'll get this better. Every week I'm learning. Every week I'm learning very little more how to technically get things done. Big shout out again to Mr. Steve Whitmer. We'll see you guys next week. Peace.